This is a lesson on constructing double bar graphs. So last lesson, we learned how to interpret and read double bar graphs. Now we're going to learn how to make them. So first of all, let's talk about the parts of a double bar graph. So these are the things that you always need to have in a double bar graph. You always need to have a title for the entire graph, and that goes at the top. You always need to have labels for the horizontal and the vertical axes. You always need to have a scale, usually along the vertical axis, but doesn't always have to be. And the scale is how much each square is worth. Um, next thing you need to know or need to have is two separate data displayed using bars. That's specific to double bar graphs only. And lastly, you need to have a legend for the data groups so that we can see what these two separate data display because they will just show colors on the graph itself. Now, you're going to do this practice. It's, it's a pretty quick um, lesson because you've seen the bar graphs, you know what they look like. Now it's time to practice them. So let's go over the instructions together. And then if you feel that you're ready to try a double bar graph on your own, then please pause the video after the instructions and try it. If you still have no clue, then please follow along with the video and you can do your graph with me. Okay, so the question says, the grade five class sells snacks at morning and afternoon recess. The table shows one day of sale. So um, we've got a type, each type of snack, we've got fruit, cereal, bar, cereal bars, popcorn, and pretzels. And then we've got data for the morning and data for the afternoon. So for fruit, they've sold $24 in the morning and $20 in the afternoon and so on. So we'll use these numbers. There'll be uh, one color of bars for morning, one color of bars for afternoon. Now he's, here are the instructions. So you're going to need a piece of graph paper and what you're going to do is to uh, construct a double bar graph to display the data. You will use the following steps. So first you are going to draw and label two axes, a vertical and a horizontal. So that big L shape. Don't make your uh, graph too tiny because then it'll be hard to read the um, data. I don't know what the rabbit is doing if you can hear that. But anyways, um, so do the axis. And then you're going to choose a scale so that's what each one of those squares is worth. So is each one going to be worth just one? Um, is it going to be worth two and skip count by twos up the squares? Worth five, worth three? Really, it, it depends on what the data is. So you look at the data and the highest number in here is 30. So uh, in yours, I would suggest doing a scale of probably two to four in there per square. Next, you're going to draw bars for each snack in the table. Use one color for morning and one color for afternoon. Please use pencil crayon or crayon for your uh, notebook because um, those pages are quite thin and your marker will go right through. We won't be able to read the other side. Okay, next up, we need to draw a legend to show what each color of bar represents. So that basically consists of drawing a little box, coloring it in of whatever, like coloring it in for the, more, the color you chose for morning, and then writing morning beside it. Okay, and lastly, you have to give the graph a title, so appropriate to what the data is being displayed. So if you think you understand how to do that, then please pause the video and try on your own. And if you're not sure what to do yet, then um, just follow along with me. So still copy down what you're doing if you're following along. Um, if you've got your bar graph constructed, then you might want to skip ahead just to see if you've gotten all the parts without watching the explanation. But please uh, turn back to this spot if you missed parts of your graph so that you can see the explanation. Okay, so you're going to use a ruler for as much as you can. Bar graphs are supposed to be neat and tidy, not with wavy lines. So first thing you need to do is you need to draw an X and a Y axis. So there's mine in the purple if you can see it. 
Now my graph just has some extra dark lines every so often, and that's just Photoshop. It has nothing to do with the graphs. Um, but here's my, my uh, vertical axis and my horizontal axis. Next, I need to uh, put a scale and labels. So I chose the scale of skip counting by two. So you can see that each square is worth two. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, all the way up to my, my uh, highest number in the data. Sometimes it's even good to go one over just to show uh, so that your uh, graph doesn't end right at the top, but um, this is fine too. So it ends at 30, that's my largest number. I've written sales on the side because this is, this is the sales. And then I've written snacks on the bottom. And I've already started uh, the types of snacks. So I've got fruit here so far. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to look at the data um, that we've been provided. And for fruit, I need to go uh, 24 for my morning and 20 for afternoon. So if I go back here, um, and here's my fruit. So in the morning, I'm going to have 24, and in the afternoon, I have 20. So I'm going to make um, a key. I'll do it down here where I'll, I know I'll have room. So in here, I've got my afternoon. And here I've got my morning. Now I'd probably actually want to put those um, the opposite way because that's the order they are in, but it's too late now. So then I would fill in my boxes according to what they are and then write out uh, their meaning. Okay, so there's my scale. So now I know that the teal is afternoon and the purple is morning. Okay, so I can already see that there's more fruit being purchased in the morning than in the afternoon. Then I go back to my data and I look at cereal bars and it shows $30 in the morning and $12 in the afternoon. So I take my ruler and I start with the uh, morning color of uh, purple. And I'm going to just put two squares in between so that I can, well actually, I'll, fit, I'll just put uh, you should really only put one square in between. So this is going to go to 30. So I'll draw all the way up, draw one square over, and then draw all the way down, nice and straight. Now notice I colored it in nicely too. Then I need to do my afternoon. So I've got my trusty teal color, and I can go all the way up to only 12. So here is my 12, and then I be sure to uh, label it uh, cereal bars. And then I move on, and um, if you think you get the idea, then please just pause the video and uh, finish your graph, and uh, I will uh, complete this quickly, and then Please uh, play the video once once you've finished your graph. Okay, so your bar graph should look something like this one. So you should have fruit, cereal balls, bars, popcorn, and pretzels, and it should look something like this with your graphs. You should have a key, um, and then at the top is the only thing that I haven't written, um, and what we could call it is uh, snack sales, because that's what it is, right? That's what they're doing. Um, you might have had a different title, but it needs to say something, something along the lines of that they're selling snacks and this is how much money they make. Okay, so last question, um, it asks you to after or to uh, talk about what you notice in the trends in snacks. So take a moment right now, pause the video again, and just jot down some things that you notice um, between the differences or the similarities in snack sales based on the graph that we made. 
Okay, so um, now that you've written a couple of things down, what you probably wrote was that uh, more than twice as many cereal bars are sold in the morning than in the afternoon, that uh, pretzels are equally popular in the morning and afternoon, that popcorn is much more popular in the afternoon, um, and that fruit is slightly less popular in the afternoon. So those are some of the things that you may have noticed. Um, so this is how you make a double bar graph. So it, it does take a little bit of time and precision to get it right, but um, they're really handy when you need to compare data. So um, you've got four questions to do in your textbook. So on page 268 to 269, and it is numbers 1 and 3 to 5. 